Of course, we're supposed to be um, physically distanced, but we shouldn't be socially distanced. If your family member refuses to go out, doesn't want to engage and talk to you, uh, those are signs that you should watch out for. If they start speaking about making a plan, what's the point of living? I don't want to live anymore. I'm scared to go out. Those are places where you should start the conversation. Hey everyone, welcome to DARPEN Dialogue. The number of people suffering from anxiety, loneliness and depression has spiked during COVID-19 and with lockdowns around the world, people's mental health has been severely impacted. Dr. Pawa is a physician, pharmacist and author of the Self-Help Reframe Toolkit and the Mind Body Cure book. She has a combination of 30 years of clinical experience, tireless passion and unique academic credentials. Dr. Pawa provides actionable advice that you can implement during fear and uncertainty and well beyond. She works with organizations to transform health in the workplace to optimize employee performance, engagement and productivity. With an education in functional integrative medicine and gut brain, neuroplasticity and immune health and certification from Harvard in mind body medicine, she is the co-founder of West Coast Women's Clinic, a board-certified menopause clinician and a sought-after TEDx speaker on the effects of stress hormones on the body. She is on the Faculty of Medicine at UBC. We spoke to Dr. Power on how to deal with depression and anxiety. Hi, Dr. Power. How are you? Good morning. I feel great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. So. Um, I've noticed and a lot of people talk about this, that depression and loneliness and anxiety are huge around the world. And we're just wondering if you can share some tips or advice on how people can deal with that. So uh, what I tell people, look, we cannot control what's out there. We can't control if we're ha gonna have a vaccine. We can't control if the virus is gonna hit us again in September. What we can control is what we should put our energy into. It's all mental energy. So take that energy and put it into something you know. Put it into something like deep control breathing every morning, meditation. That actually slows down your nervous system so that your cortisol and adrenaline go down and you can control how you breathe. So doing deep breath and keeping your mind calm those are ways to keep your body very calm. If you keep your nervous system calm, you also keep your immune system more strong and robust. So whatever you do to calm down your nervous system is good for the immune system. And that's a really important message for all your readers or listeners to, uh, to take home that when you do downtime, when you get off the phone, when you get off the, the, the technology and, and, and listening to the news, you should try to control your breathing. That's number one. Number two is you can control how you respond to things. You don't have to listen to the news all the time. You don't have to listen and re react in a way of fear. You can actually take what you need to hear and then take a deep breath and make a very deliberate and measured response so your nervous system always stays calm. But you can choose to just stay informed and then take a deep breath and learn to respond but not react. Great message there. With that said, a lot of people who are going through mental health challenges um, don't always feel they're told to speak up many, many times. It's a very important dialogue that, you know, society keeps coming back to. Um, but sometimes they don't necessarily uh, speak out because they're not in the right frame of mind to do so. So what signs or symptoms should family members look out for um, when they feel that that person certainly need help, uh, you know, certainly needs help, but you know, they're not in the right frame of mind to do so. So if, if you observe some family members that have got severe anxiety or severe depression, what you'll notice is they, they, if they're very, very anxious, 
they become consumed. They talk about it all the time. I had a patient who washed her hands so much. She became so obsessed with keeping her hands clean that her hands became dry and started to bleed. So that was, you know, like an obsessive uh, anxiety that needs to get help. If you see someone who's cut themselves off socially, they're no longer, of course, we're supposed to be um, physically distanced, but we shouldn't be socially distanced. If your family member refuses to go out, doesn't want to engage and talk to you, uh, those are signs that you should watch out for. If they start speaking about making a plan, what's the point of living? I don't want to live anymore. I'm scared to go out. Those are places where you should start the conversation and have good resources ready for them to, to get the help they need. Uh, I think as family members, it's really important to be observant and don't be judgmental. It's, it's, all, it's so easy in the South Asian community to say if someone has mental illness or mental health issues, that it's a sign of weakness. And we, we should learn not to judge people like that. It's just like any other biological condition in the medical world. Uh, we just need to be curious, not furious. Don't get angry, don't judge. Just be open and have conversations that engage the person and make it comfortable so that they can say, look, you know what? I think about this all the time. I need to get help. Right. Um, for those individuals who are experiencing mental health challenges, um, why do you find that they have a hard time accepting uh, that there is a hindrance in their life or that they are going through something that's impacting themselves and other people? And what message do you have for those individuals? I think, you know, there there is a cultural um, awareness too that, as I said, mental health is not easily accepted in our culture and we need to be culturally sensitive to that and have counselors who are more uh, aware of the risk for the South Asian community. People don't connect how stress causes physical symptoms. So you would be astonished to know that 75% of the symptoms that walk into a doctor's office can be attributed to excessive chronic stress hormone exposure. So gut problems, headaches. I had a lady at my clinic the other day who had a severe case of eczema and psoriasis. And it was because she was so stressed. She's working from home. She's tutoring her kids from home. She's cooking more. She's doing more laundry. All the burden was on her and her stress showed up with eczema in the skin. So a lot of symptoms that the patient is experiencing can be attributed back to stress hormones. So we have to be aware of that and teach people to connect the dots because our body works as a unit. We're integrated. We're not just these systems that are divided up. And uh, the reframe toolkit that I promised you. So the reframe, it means look at health differently. Just stop mm -hmm. and, and look at health and reframe and say, what can I do? So the R in reframe is about resetting your nervous system. So when you do your deep breathing, you reset your nervous system so it's not revved up and it's slowed down. And that's through the BMW breath, mind, word, uh, meditation. So that's I the, love the acronym BMW. <laughs> it makes not the car. Remember, not the, car, the opposite. Slow down. No. Yeah, slow down. So press on the brakes, right? So too much gas makes your motor rev up and makes you sick. So press on the gas by doing your deep controlled breathing. That's the R. The E is for exercise. So people don't know how important exercise is for mental health. You make more serotonin when you exercise, right. but also exercise is really important for the immune system because as you exercise, you're pushing your lymph around and the lymph is full of lymphocytes, which fights virus. Okay, so the people who died from COVID were sitting around a lot. If you look at the 0.04% of the people that died, they were in nursing homes, they were sitting around. And when you're sitting around, your lymph is not circulating. So exercise is important. So that's the E. The F is for food. What kind of food are you choosing to improve your immune system? So eat lots and lots of vegetables, avoid all the carbs and the snacks and the sugar because that's not good for your immune system. So eat foods that are fermented. Having homemade yogurt is a really good 
thing for your immune system because our immune system is located 85% of it is in the gut. So keeping our gut healthy with right. probiotics and fiber is really good. So that's your F. The R is for rest and sleep so that's two different things rest means getting off the television getting off your phone and going in nature and having downtime because each time you rest and have downtime you've just improved your immune system remember your nervous system is closely linked to your immune system so the more times you have downtime for your nervous system the better your immune system and so that would be the r a is for looking at the dialogue. What kind of thoughts do you think all the time? If your thoughts are automatic negative thoughts, well, they're feeding into your nervous system, which also impacts your immune system. So assess your dialogue and try to reframe the world and say, you know what? We're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. If I show up and do my exercise and do all the things I'm supposed to do and vitamins and and, and healthy living and healthy choices, I'm gonna be okay. So living with a little bit of trust. Uh, M is for mindset. Our mindset is the way we see the world. So it's really important to react or respond. So when you respond, you're coming with a mindset that is very positive. So you're saying that no matter what, I'm okay. You don't cave into the fear. All this anxiety and uncertainty about COVID is due to fear, because fear of the unknown, fear of what might happen. Right. So don't entertain fear, entertain trust, so that's your mindset. And the last D is about making sure that if your symptoms are severe and you're very depressed or you're very anxious and you're not able to manage, you're not a failure. It just means that biologically your body is not able to cope and you need to get help. So B is for get examination and evaluation with your healthcare provider. And there are so many wonderful um, like mental health units in each area that is now dealing with the pandemic of, mm -hmm. of uh, anxiety. Yeah, excellent, excellent points there um, about the mind-body connection and all the various organs of the body working together for the body and that we shouldn't neglect that. Uh, with that said, some exciting news on your end. Uh, your book's been published and it is ready to be ordered. So tell us a little bit about your book. Okay, so the book is a passion project-ish because I, I was a patient. So my 30 years of experience as a doctor are also based on the fact that for seven years I had a horrific car accident when I was 32 years old. Wow. And when I became a patient of the medical system, I realized there's some gaps here. They were very good at doing surgery, giving me medication, intervention, but no one really put everything together and no one actually thought about integrating the mind and the body and how important it is to involve the patient in their self-care. So my big message to everyone is take charge of your health. You are your best doctor. You know your mind the best. You know how you react to situations. So become familiar with your mind because your mindset is what helps you to decide if you eat good food if you go to bed on time, if you exercise or not. So in my book, what I did was create a self-help reframe toolkit to give people the knowledge and the tools so they can look after their own health. Because I really believe everyone, especially now, has to take charge of their health. Don't just rely on surgery and drugs. Yes, we need those things for severe illnesses, but for prevention, it is up to you to become your own best doctor. Dr. Pawa, thank you so much for all that wonderful information. Uh, we truly, truly appreciated you taking time with us today. Great, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for taking the time. Okay, bye-bye. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe.